Good morning, so family. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Dan Shue from Group 22B. I am a British, live in Malaysia, Para, and I would like to present my cross-cultural interview analysis. As you are aware, the purpose of this analysis is to understand the cultural differences and similarities that emerge from the interview. So let me start to brief about my interviewees that involved in this interview analysis. First, I have interviewed a Japanese girl who called Minami Yamada, also known as Mina. She does not have any specific belief and she stays in Japan now. She has experience to participate in Christmas party. Next, Jenny is my classmate in from Sex from Para. She comes from a mixed races background with a Chinese father and an Indian mother. She follows the Hindu as her belief and she usually will enjoy dishes with spice such as biryani. The follow interview V is a Thai woman called Mei Yi. She has married to a Malaysian and has been living in Malaysia for over 10 years. Her belief is Theravada Buddhism, a type of Buddhism in Thailand. She celebrates the Song Klan as known as the New Year in Thailand. Besides that, I have interviewed my pen pal from New Zealand, Patty. He specifically stays at Artland now. He doesn't have any belief, but he enjoyed the warm atmosphere in Belgium. The last interviewee is Douglas. He is my Christian online gaming friend who lives in Kuala Lumpur. He belongs to a Christian family, except for his grandfather is a Buddhism. He needs to go to church for praying every Sunday morning. I have analyzed the similarities and differences culture between the interviewees by using Hofstede's cultural dimension. First, as you can see through the table, the power distance dimension shows the different perception of authority and leadership among the interviewees. With Jenny, Mei Yi, which is similar with the interviewer with me, has a high power distance, while Douglas, Mina and Patty supported low power distance. In the interview, Douglas say his cultural belief that leadership quality include caring for team members and listening to their ideas. Despite these differences, collectivism was shared by all interviewees. They all agreed that they need to gather the opinions and views from the others before making certain decisions. In addition to this, in terms of masculine or feminine, only my cultural background does not focus on gender zones. Other interviewees, such as Mei Yi, who is from Thai culture, she said that there will be more feminists, while Mina said the masculinity will be emphasized in Japan. Next, the uncertainty awareness that dimension. In this aspect, except me, Patty and Mina, Douglas, Jenny and Mei all belongs to the high uncertainty avoidance dimension. It is because they believe the consensus is better than conflict, so they are less willing to try and accept other people's culture through the interview. Finally, in the long or short term orientation dimension, the analysis indicates that all the interviewees belong to the long term orientation which is similar to my cultural insight. Except for Patty, he prefers short-term orientation because he thinks family is more important and he prefers to enjoy the moment. There are few practical implications, which is increase cultural awareness. By increasing the cultural awareness, the staff, included the leader, can be better understanding of value and behavior of the employees or their customers from different backgrounds. Next, the cultural insight enables, encourage, an open-minded approach to cross-cultural management. This mindset enables employees and leaders to explore innovative ideas, challenging traditional practices, and also enhancing problem-solving from different alternatives. Besides understanding local traditions, customer behavior, and market demands can guide an organization for market expansion. Tailoring products, services, 
a marketing strategy to align with local preferences is key to building successful relationship with local customer and expanding the business to meet their unique demand. But there will happen some potential challenges in an organization, such as communication style, the differences in language users, non-verbal cures, and communication patterns can result in miscommunication and conflicts. Furthermore, the different leadership style also is a challenge for cross-cultural management in an organization. Multicultural workplaces often have diverse leadership principles and practices, which can lead to management difficulties. Developing cross-cultural competency is necessary to adapt and navigate various leadership styles effectively. In addition, different cultural work approaches different resolving in conflicts based on their norms and values that maybe can lead to misunderstanding and tensions. Therefore, sensitivity and flexibility are essential to manage conflicts efficiently and prevent intercultural conflict. To address these challenges, organizations should invest in cultural education and training programs that cover behavioral norms, leadership preferences, and communication style. This will help the executive and staff develop tolerance, patience, and cultural awareness. Last, promote a clear and respectful communication across various forms, including verbal and non-verbal. Formal and informal is important because this can encourage employees and the leaders to communicate clearly and concisely, foster effective intercultural interaction, and reduce the misunderstandings. In a nutshell, this interview experience have widened my perspective on cross-cultural management. It encouraged me receptivity to new ideas and foster cultural awareness. Adaptability and respect for religious diversity is a valuable opportunity for my personal growth, especially in business and organization context. Besides, it also enhances cultural competence and the ability to navigate global multiculturalism. So that's all from me. Thank you for your listening.